Are there native plants that critters love but people hate? You better believe there are, and they can be an important part of your habitat management. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology, and today I'm going to cover three plants that critters love but people hate, even though they shouldn't. At the end of the video, I'm also going to give you a bonus tip on managing plants for wildlife, so be sure to stick around for that. I'm going to start off with a plant that everybody who has hay fever loves to hate, common ragweed. Ambrosia artemisifolia. While we are all familiar with ragweed's ability to cause watery eyes and thunderous sneezing fits, most of us are not familiar with its wonderful benefits for wildlife. All of that windborne pollen, the reason it makes us sneeze, is an important source of food for pollinators such as native bees in the late summer and early fall. Ragweed produces abundant, small seed that feed a wide range of songbirds and game birds and is an important food source for the northern bobwhite and mourning dove. In addition, several species of small mammals also eat the seeds. The fern-like aromatic foliage is a moderate to highly preferred white-tailed deer forage. And in fact, I had a hard time finding any to show on camera because the deer have uh, clipped it all off. The growth form of ragweed, a tallish plant with large leaves parallel to the ground with drooping tips, kind of like an umbrella, provide exceptional brood cover for turkey poults and quail chicks, and a thick stand of ragweed makes good fawning cover. If this isn't enough to convince you that common ragweed is worth some sneezing to improve your old field management areas, it is also a host plant for at least five species of moth. Next up is pokeweed, Phytolacca americana. Pokeweed, just like ragweed, is a plant that loves disturbed areas and is common in old fields. It can get big, be aggressive, and can spread, but its wildlife benefits make it worth dealing with if you have the space. Poke produces clusters of white flowers in mid to late summer that are attractive to a wide range of pollinators. In late summer and early fall, the flower clusters are replaced with clusters of dark purple berries that are eaten by songbirds, game birds, and just about every wild mammal you can imagine. Seed that makes it to the ground is an important food source for northern bobwhite, and morning doves are attracted to it like steel to a magnet. Poke foliage is a moderate to highly preferred deer browse. The large, shrubby growth form of poke provides cover and can add structure to a field that has little or no shrub component. Poke, along with every other plant on this list, are not the best choices for landscape beds or native plantings around your house, but they are great for old fields, early successional areas, and fence rows. They really add to the wildlife benefit when they are around. If you're finding the information in this video valuable, please be sure to pollinate that like button. Also, if you have any experience managing common ragweed for wildlife, please comment below and let us know how it went. This next one is a plant that always seems to show browse damage every time I find it, tick trefoil, also known as beggar's lice, the desmodium species. There are several species of tick trefoil, and deer, rabbits, and woodchucks find them all palatable. Of course, the reason for them being called beggar's lice are the sticky, somewhat triangle-shaped seeds. People find the seeds to be a nuisance, but game birds such as wild turkey, northern bobwhite, and morning dove eat them, as do many species of small mammals. The blooms are visited by native bees such as bumblebees and the really cool leaf cutting bees and tick trefoils are the host plant for several species of moths and butterflies. If you are lucky enough to be able to use fire as a management tool, you are likely to have a thriving population of tick trefoil. Definitely a plant worth the trouble of picking stick tights off your pants and boots. Bonus tip time. When planting a pollinator planting, it is important that you plan to have three different species blooming in each of the spring, summer, and fall. That means you want three different plants blooming at that time. The middle of summer can be a tough time to find something that'll do this. So if you wanna learn more about plants that will bloom during the heat of summer, check out this video, subscribe to Backyard Ecology, and get out and explore nature in your backyard.